Hello, hello, hello. I know I look a little bit different now. Didn't have the time to pour the CRT model yet. It's like in that meme where child asks, can we get a CRT? And mom answers, we have a CRT at home. And well, this is the CRT at home. Anyway, for now, this will be the final video of the interactive architectural tutorial set. Uh, we have learned quite a few things here and there. And as promised, we now will be stepping outside and seeing what's behind door number one. Ta -da! There we go. This messy boy right here. Let me just make it clean. We have a dome and we have a tower, a staircase. And if I remember correctly, yeah, I can start running here. I'm recording, so it's gonna be a little bit laggy here. Hopefully the frame rate is not too obnoxious. But yeah, you can see full and you know, the, the structure is fully interactive. If I were to uh, press this button, like that, we're back to having it as a dome. Pretty neat, huh? I'm controlling it with my mouse, by the way. So, Grasshopper, huh? Grasshopper and Unreal. Enough. Let's jump right into it. Alrighty then. So, the first thing to do in Rhino, naturally, is to create something that will be ported into Unreal. We need to begin by choosing the units that we will use. Unreal Engine by default uses centimeters. So I'll just type in units. And here under model units, I'll find centimeters, hit OK, and now we're good to go. So that's actually a pretty important step or else things will be out of whack when you import it, import them into Unreal. Second thing is, well, Remember that staircase, we need like a block to, to work with. So for this, I will just create a box, a real quick one. And I'll just, um, I need to figure out the, I guess we will anchor it on the Y axis. So from here, let's just create a box. Let's start drawing it from zero and just type in values. So the thickness of the box, or, or the, the length of the box, sorry, that's going to be, let's go for a meter, or rather, no, that's gonna be 20 centimeters. Yeah, like that. So the length is 20 centimeters, then the width, that is gonna be a meter. So 20, 100, and then for the height, let's go for something pretty high, uh, four meters, five meters. Let's go for 5 meters, why not? 5,000. Sorry, 500. Not 5,000, 500. Enter. We have successfully created a box. Now I need to center the box so that it orients properly when it's rotated. Basically the 0, 0, 0 coordinate is going to be the pivot point of our box when we will be orienting it, right? So I'm just going to select it and with, a, with the gumball, <clears throat> since the width is 20, I will move it back by minus 10 along the x-axis and by minus 50 along the y-axis. And now, you know, that the pivot is correctly placed. Then, so this is going to be for now our testing element thing. Uh, we will find, uh, uh, we will replace it with a clean, kind of nice clean uh geometry once we're done with the whole system then uh, next thing is a dome we need some sort of a way of how we can control a dome shape for our box so that um, sorry for for our export so that the box gets arranged on top of a dome in a nice way remember again the example that I've shown at the start so I'll just draw a single line like so, a straight line segment, and I'll just do 25 meters. That's going to be like a dimension of my dome, I guess. And then for it, uh, let's go for, let's rebuild it, rebuild, four points for the point count, degree three, delete input yes, hit okay. 
just grab these two points and middle points and just drag them out. So I'm initially creating an arc. I want my dome to be arced, right? Then I will just make a copy of it, rotate it 90 degrees, move it up, maybe, maybe somewhere here. Uh, F10, play around with the control points even more, maybe something like that. Perhaps this one is also a little bit rotated, like 45 degrees. There's honestly no um, limitation to the shape that you choose, as long as it's a single surface shape. Uh, you'll see why in just a second. Now I'll just make a mirror of it to the opposite side. Something like that. Sure, why not? So basically with these two components we should have everything that we need so we can move into grasshopper and actually make the grasshopper script that can transfer information into unreal so i'll just type in grasshopper right here okay so once grasshopper is loaded in then we need to reference in our stuff clearly so one thing is just give me a second uh one thing is first getting the curves in curve component uh, let me do bifocals you don't need bifocals i need bifocals so that it's clear to you what is it that i'm doing it we just write this little uh name for 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 the nodes so set multiple curves one two three there we go loft them and let's just populate the lofted surface with points populate uh, geometry there we go how many points uh, let's go for a hundred or let, let's do 120 right now just double click type in 120 there we go and then once we have the points here we want to position our slab I'll, I'll call it a slab our slabs we will or elements we will want to position on these points but they will also need to be rotated so this is where it gets tricky technically i could uh, evaluate uh, surface and i could get well we will need to evaluate surface either way so i will be doing it but i'll, I'll talk about the problem a little bit later one second evaluate surface I am stupid. It's not a valid surface. <laughs> it's a, a surface closest point. So from these points, we will find the point that's closest on the surface. That's a part of the surface. Surface closest point. Points go in here. Surface goes in here. Like that. There we go. So in event, what this does is basically gives us the UV coordinates on the surface. But as you can see, the problem is that the UV coordinates, if I were to, uh, you don't need to do this, but if I were to just grab a panel, uh, the UV coordinates are in centimeters rather, so they measure the actual length rather than in proportion. I need it to be in proportion. So I need the ranges to be between zero and one. Thankfully, it's very easy to do. All you need to do is just right click on the surface input right here and choose reparameter uh reparameterize yes <laughs> and now it's proportion based right so uh, the first point is like 11 percent along this edge and 46 percent along like this direction right okay so now with this done um, i can actually talk about the problem of orienting so if i were to if i were to orient the you know just grab a plane don't follow along with this i'll just exp use this to explain um evaluate surface i could do this like surface we get the uv we get the planes well this one needs to be reparameterized as well we get the planes and then we do orient um, and this box, you know, rep gets oriented from XY plane to the new planes like that. Easy, right? That's uh, it's a little bit pro more problematic. We can't use this method because <clears throat> the translation that happens is a non. Um, okay, Unreal Engine reads 
rotation values as pitch, yaw, and roll. Like rotation in X, rotation in Y, rotation in Z. And that is what it's going to expect us to give it. In this case, we only get the transformation data, which is called orientation. And to break it apart, technically we could write a C-sharp script to do that, but all of my testing, according to all of my testing, the C-sharp script, um, it just it does, doesn't work properly. It gives me weird anomalies in places where the elements are perfectly aligned with an axis, either X, Y, or Z axis. So that's a no-go. So we can't do it this way. <clears throat> so how do we do it? Uh, let me delete that as well. Um, I will, since we are dealing with a dome-like shape, I will be asking, where are we um, on the surface? right? And according to the proportion at which we're on the surface, the elements will tilt. So I will... Um, one second, let, let, let me think real fast. Mm. Okay, so first of all, we need to deconstruct this to get the values separated. Deconstruct uh, as a point, deconstruct point. It's just the name is deconstruct, right? So now we get X and Y values separated. And since they go in, into the range between uh, zero and one, um, I know for a fact that the middle is going to be 0 0.5. I don't want it to be 0 0.5 because I want the rotations to go into the negatives here and, and into the positives here. So from 0 0.5, I will move it to 0, meaning that this will become minus 0 0.5 and this will become 0 0.5, right? I'm just kind of shifting all of the values by back by 0 0.5 and making that my central value, right? So very easy subtraction from x 0 0.5 or let's just slash slash 0 0.5 like that and i'll do the same thing with y so copy paste connect y here also remove 0 0.5 okay we've shifted it and now i want the new values to be all of our values are going to be between minus 0 0.5 until 0 0.5. I want the values to actually be wider. I want them to be from minus 1 until 1 and middle being 0, right? So I just multiply. Multiply them, oops, by 2. Slash slash 2. Like that. Easy peasy. Copy the multiplication for the... Uh, for the Y output here and that's it um, at this point we have values now I need to be able to choose a degree so when an element is going to be placed on this point how much will it rotate and when element is placed on this point how much will it rotate the other way right so I will need to multiply this again. Technically, I could just add it here, but let's let's just keep it pedagogical, right? Linear. So multiply. Um, I'll just copy the multiplication for the other one, and I'm just gonna use like for now 60 degrees, like that, like that. So this one that's on the right on the edge is gonna be rotated plus 60 degrees. Uh, this one that is right in the middle, well, very close to the middle, is going to be straight up. It's not going to be rotated. And this one is going to be minus 60 degrees, right? Because minus 1 until 1, minus 60 until 60. Okay. So now, uh, for all of the points, every single point in my surface, I will create an XY plane. Just like so. XY plane. And I will uh, rotate my XY plane, rotate 3D, like that, with the angle set to degrees, right here. Right click on the angle, choose degrees, and I'll use my first multiplication for my angle. You can see that it's messy, that's fine. 
it's fine that it's messy because um, it doesn't know where the center of rotation is and where the axis is. So I'm just going to take this XY plane and I'm going to deconstruct the plane like that to get its origin point. That's going to be the center of the rotation. And I'm going to take it, it, it should be rotated around, yeah, clearly around the X axis, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, because it's X here and we've connect X there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be X axis. So it's rotated around X axis. And you can even see now if I hide this X, Y plane that the planes on at this from this angle, they're aligning from this angle. They're not because we still haven't rotated them along the Y axis. So that's what we're going to do now. This is where actually roll and pitch start coming in. Uh, we're defining the roll right here, and now we're going to de be defining the pitch, which comes after the roll, right? So that that's the difference. You first do the X, Y rotation, then you do the, sorry, you first do the X rotation, then you do the Y rotation for the rotated plane at its rotated, along its rotated vectors, and so on. So it kind of adds up. Um, that's why it's a little bit tricky to transfer. Anyway, uh, we will be doing rotate 3D again, like that. We will be deconstructing the, where is it? The plane, deconstructing the plane again, like that. The origin goes in here. This time it's not X, this time it's Y axis. By the way, all, all files available to Patreon supporters. So if you don't want to follow along with this, if you just want the file, uh, and just to kind of analyze it on your own pace, consider supporting the channel. Link in the video description below. And you will get both Grasshopper, Rhino, Unreal Engine, everything uh, for free. Anyway, with that out of the way, degrees. I, I change this to degrees and I just connect my second multiplication that came from the Y right here to my second rotation. Like that. Bam. And now if I were to check, let me hide everything. These are the final planes that I have. Technically, I could also kind of rotate them um, along the Z axis, but uh, we, that's the yaw. Uh, we don't need to do that uh, for this particular example. Okay, so with this done, uh, let's check how the boxes will look like. So I'm just going to use the BREP component right here. I'm going to reference in the box into my BREP component, like that, the element, sorry. I'll use orient, orient. Uh, BREP connects to the geometry input. By default, A is set to world X, Y, so we don't need to connect anything to A. And for B, we use the rotated planes. Bam, we have a hedgehog, right? We have a hedgehog. And I could control, I could change, let's disconnect that and um, create another slider for 30, uh, sorry, for, for the y-axis that is set to 30, so that I can change the angles uh, separately, right, for, for the two directions. But yeah, that seems to be doing just fine. So we have uh, this kind of a small little script going. Now, to actually be able to transfer it into Unreal Engine, we will need to use uh, a CSV table, like an Excel spreadsheet, basically, which is going to be, well, it's not going to be that hard to, to make. So we need, we need, we need, we need to build up that table in, in, in terms of indices, in terms of uh, X, Y, Z location. So indices is gonna be the first row that just counts how many elements there are, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Then X location row, or am I showing, I'm showing the column, right? X location column, Y location column, Z location column, X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation, X scale, Y scale, Z scale, right? So in our case, we don't really care about scale, so we will not be using that um, column. It's just going to be location and rotation. The scale kind of stays the the same, right? We, we don't really need to 
<clears throat> sorry, uh, we don't really need to mess with it. So, uh, it's going to be a very large merge component. I'm just kind of drawing it here. Merge component uh, that will have a, a bunch of merges coming into the large merge component. I know it's weird. Trust me, it's going to work. <laughs> Trust the process, right? So every single merge component will have a panel and in the panel we will name the column how the column is going to be named the first one is going to be called index don't press enter if you press enter like that that's bad because you're making a second line of text make sure that after you write index you just click anywhere outside of the screen to stop it so that it's a single line text you connect that to D1. For D2, uh, you will need to plug in some sort of a, a set of values that will come in, right? It's gonna be, um, in, in this case, it's just gonna be a series of numbers that are counting how many planes are there. So I actually can do, do this now. Series, series of numbers that connects to D2 like that. And then the count is going to be us measuring the list length of our rotated uh, planes, right? Of how many planes we have. So we ask just, okay, how many list length, how many planes do we have? Connect that, connect that to the count of series and we're good to go. It's basically just gonna, we have like 120 or whatever planes. It's just gonna count uh, for all of them. And those are going to be the indices that we will give. Okay, uh, now with this done, let's create, uh, let's make sure that, by the way, that uh, we use simplify as an output. This is important, 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 alert, alert. Right click the merge output, choose simplify. Right click the merge output, choose graft. Simplify, graft. So that every single indice comes out as a separate data tree. That's important. Okay. And this connects to D1 of our big, well, future big merge. Then I will just take this uh, panel together with this merge, copy, paste, control C, control V, disconnect the series from it. And I'll just uh, name this one X underscore L O C X location. Hit OK. There we go. <clears throat> take it, copy paste, paste, Y location, Z location. There we go. Uh, so th this is going to be waiting for numbers uh, for X, Y and Z location of where these planes are, well, located. So I'm just going to say, okay, the final rotated planes, give me your well, deconstruct them, deconstruct them, wait, this will not work, will it? It might work, but let, let's be careful with this, deconstruct plane, let's do it this way, deconstruct plane, like that, then we deconstruct our origin, just a regular deconstruct, like that, and then x goes into d2, Y goes into D2 of Y location, Z goes into D2 of Z location. Like that. Easy. I'll just group this so that uh, it's kind of easy to see what's what. Then I just expand, or rather, as we're plugging stuff in, it's going to expand by itself. Connect, connect, connect. There we go. This should be, this should be fine. Let's see. Ah, uh, it's a little bit dirty. You can see the, the table, the addresses are a little bit messed up. So let's do one pass at it, making it cleaner. Right click on the D2 input right here, flatten. Right click on D2, flatten, D2, flatten, D2, flatten. This just makes, uh, like, removes all of the data tree information and makes sure that the, all of the values talk. Now, as I hover my mouse here, 
everything's much cleaner, much nicer. Okay, now let's deal with rotation. So I'm just gonna actually borrow these, copy paste, like that. Disconnect, of course, X, Y, and Z, like that, and call it X rot R R O T Y R O T and Z R O T. Make sure that it's a single line of text that you're not pressing enter. Okay, so in terms of rotations, that's gonna be a little bit more tricky. Um, well, not really, but it's gonna be the, the noodles are gonna be a little bit longer because the X rotations that we're using come in from here, right? So we kind of need to drag a very long noodle like that and connect it like so. Uh, if you do, if you double click on the wire, you can make it a little bit cleaner like that with relays. But still, it's, you know, it's not the prettiest. Same thing with Y rotation that connects from the second multiplication, right? That, that we used. Again, I'll just use the little noodles, uh, sorry, little relays to clean up the noodles. Perhaps something like that. And then uh, the Z rotation, that is going to be a bunch of zeros because we're not rotating anything. Is it zeros or... Yeah, let's, let's go for zeros. So I will, I need to create a bunch of zeros. I will just use repeat data, which asks me, what do I want to repeat? Well, slash slash zero, you know, just a panel with a zero. And it asks me how many times? Well, we already have the list length here, but uh, since that wire would be very awkward to kind of drag like so, this would work dragging it like so, but it's not, not pretty. I'm just gonna grab another list length from the Rotate 3D from here, connect that to the L input like so, we get a crap ton of zeros, I connect them to Z rotation like that. And all of this gets connected to D5, D6, and D7 here. Okay. With this done, with this done, I need to now, um, let me show you in the panel, like every data branch that we have has like the index X, Y, Z, X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation, index X, Y, Z and rotations, right? We, the way uh, Unreal Engine reads these values is if you have a comma or rather the way uh, column values are ex exported is if you have a comma between uh, the different numbers. So I'm going to use text join, text join like that, write slash slash, and then place a comma, not a dot, not a point, a comma like that. See comma, connect that to the join. Right? That's the joining like uh, symbol. Uh, now, if I check it with a panel, I can see that every branch has been collapsed and now everything is in one line and everything is div divided up by commas. I now can flatten this data tree. So right click on the R output, choose flatten. Now I have it like this. And that's honestly about it. Actually, we do need a panel. Panel, connect it like that make the bad boy big like that and that's it that's all you need now i'm just going to quickly um just one second in my youtube tutorial folder on desktop i'm just gonna create a new folder and i'll call it uh excel sheets or just excel uh excel sheets whatever excel sheets and i will be saving this uh into that excel sheets folder how do you do that well you need to stream the contents i will right click on my panel right click i will choose my stream destination 
you can see that I, all, I have already worked with this quite a bit in like yeah, experimenting and so on, but I'll find my panel, YouTube tutorial, Excel sheets, there we go, that's my folder. I'll name it, and I'll name it uh, YouTube uh, 1, YouTube 1, whatever, YouTube 1, and I here for the type I will choose CSV. Oh, it even means comma separated value files. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we are using a comma. CSV, hit save, you're done. Then you right click, choose stream contents. This is important, stream contents. And now every time I update something in my, in my file here, uh, the panel will update. And everything, every time the panel updates, uh, the CSV file will be updated automatically. So we're using it as a bridge that will connect into Unreal. So, for instance, if I increase the count to 7 or 800 and I check my Excel sheets, you can see that it's 48 kilobytes, right? If I change the count to 2 and I check my sheets, it's 1 kilobyte, right? It's automatically being updated, which is very nice. I will use something like 200 for now, just a little hedgehog right here. Okay, with this done, I will just select everything and hide. Just simply hide everything, disable preview, and I will even hide the curves. And now we will do phase two of our uh, structure because it needs to animate between the two phases, right? That's, that's the key thing, that's the important thing. So for this, I will create an XY plane Let's zoom in somewhere below here. XY plane. I'll create that. I will rotate my XY plane by... Sorry, stop. Stop. I remembered one thing I, that I didn't cover. Oh, thank God. That would, be, would have been very bad. <clears throat> very bad indeed. Okay. So... We are using, in, in Unreal Engine, we're using the right-hand uh, coordinate system while Rhino uses left-hand coordinate system. Uh, should I show it to you with the internets? Coordinate left-hand. Uh, there we go, Cartesian coordinates. So X, Y, Z, left-handed, Y, Z, X, right-handed, right? So you can see that it's <clears throat> the Z is flipped or other way around, the Y and X is flipped, right? So uh, if we are moving something in between Rhino and uh, Unreal, you need to ac account for that if you're doing it manually. If you're using Datasmith or any any software like that, that's fine. It's going to do it for you. But in our case, we need to account for that. So our X and y, and y movements, those need to be negative. So we're flipping them. We're moving them in the opposite direction. Like that. X movement negative or x location i guess negative y location negative that is honestly i think the rotations will be fine they should be fine yeah i think they'll they'll be fine it's just the location if the rotations are wrong then i will i will fix them in real time but uh, yeah so make sure that i'll just even group this this is important okay back to the staircase <clears throat> sorry for for missing that we're rotating um i i am using the wrong rotation for the plane we will be using rotate 3d like that as per usual degrees and in this case we're just gonna say the rotation in the x-axis is gonna be um zero degrees we're not rotating it around the x-axis which means here i'm just gonna type in x like that as long as we're on the as long as we're 
on the world xy plane and that's the plane that we're rotating i can just use the general axis that's fine if the plane was off then i would need to deconstruct the plane and get the axis from it that's an important distinction okay now since this was not is not being rotated i can still use the y axis come on uh rotate uh 3d y-axis and let's do degrees and for the y-axis I'm gonna be using 90 degrees for rotation and it's hard to see but uh, it's basically this plane just flips flips like that 90 degrees and then the final one, the final rotation is going to be around the Z axis. And that's going to be the, the, the tricky one. Uh, rotate. Uh, 3D. Bam. Degrees. Like that. Uh, this will require a series of numbers. Like that. And how many? Well, that we need to have exactly the same amount of elements as we are describing here, right? So technically I should use the same slider, but mm, I don't know. It's it's a long wire. I, I don't I don't like it. So I'll just remember that this and uh, 200 and this these two sliders need to be the same. Right, the same value or else it's not gonna work so 200 and I just connect it to my uh, to my count I believe yeah I just connect it to my count now you can see that every one degree it's gonna be rotated 200 times um, and you get 200 planes uh, I don't want it to be every one degree I want it to be every 10 degrees around 10 degrees so I'm just gonna use that that value here but yeah, we're rotating it uh, around the z-axis. You can see automatically it finds the z-axis, but I should probably plug it in either way. Z-axis, just like that. That is it. Okay, so now once this is done, I will move. Hmm. I should move these planes vertically up. So these planes are being moved. Jesus Christ, they, they're destroying the inner yard. If, if the microphone is picking it up, I'm sorry. Where was I? Z. We're moving it along the Z axis, upwards, world Z, with series of numbers. Please stop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, with uh, with series of numbers um, that start with zero, so the first plane is not moved, and the last plane, uh, well, we're not sure how much the last plane, how high it's gonna be, but the step size should be the thickness of our stair that we have modeled. So the stair, come on, distance, twenty centimeters. Okay. So we will be using 20 here as our step size. And the count is going to be the same slider right here. Bam. So we get this, this nice little spiral, right? Going on. Okay. So with the move done, uh, now I can actually test how will these slabs connect to these planes. So I'll use uh, orient as per usual orient. We're orienting on the moved planes. Uh, the B rep that's being oriented is our slab. Set one B rep. Bam. And since the starting position was XY, it just works. We get ourselves a spiral staircase. That's nice, right? Easy peasy. And we retain the angles that we will be able to use in, in our second csv document uh, speaking of which let's copy so i'm just gonna grab 
all of this just like that So I'm just gonna, I'm just grabbing all of these uh, values, not values, uh, all of these nodes like that. Um, copy, paste, like so. Ew, ew, ew! That that did, didn't work out. Let's try again. I'm just gonna grab more than I need. Copy, paste, and I'm just gonna delete the ones that I don't need. So. Um, da, 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 the deconstruct those can go away those can go away the wires here I will just uh, alt disconnect them that is not how you disconnect them control disconnect them from the relays like so and the list length also gets disconnected there we go we're Gucci so now um, index basically asks us let me move this closer uh, index basically asks us how many uh, well list length has uh, will give us how many uh, indices does it need we know for a fact it needs 200 because it's going to be 200 elements but I'm just going to connect my move output to the list length right here then for my location I will deconstruct the points into x, y, uh, sorry, deconstruct the plane, deconstruct the plane to get the center points and deconstruct those to get x, y, z coordinates and I'll just plug them into x, y and z, like so. Now when I think about it, the location should be the same, it should be the rotation that's changing. Hmm, I'm curious. Okay, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to use negative x rotation and y rotation values for the staircase, while here I'm going to use negative values for location, uh, for x location and y location, and we'll see which one of the structures messes up. And the one that messes up, that's the one that we will need to uh, fix. So we're checking if we need to flip the rotations or the locations. Okay, uh, so for the rotations, we have zero rotation on the x-axis. Okay, so we'll need to repeat the number zero, like that, on the x-axis. And basically, how many times? Well, list length, 200. But we want it to be automated like that. Then for Y rotation, it's going to be 90 degrees for every single plane. So I'm just going to actually copy paste this and type in 90 here. Ah, don't press enter. 90. Like that. Single line, single line. And I said that I'm going to be using a negative value for the rotations so we just use that negative bam for y rotation and negative for x rotation like that it gets tricky trans trying to translate from one to the other but i think this this should either this or this should work we'll see i did a lot of tests but now i forgot and can't be bothered to check so we will be fixing it in the middle of the tutorial and then for the z rotation uh, those are the series uh, this this input here that we put it into rotate 3d so uh, it's gonna be a little bit yucky but i need to do it so a long wire from series into d2 of z rotation and i'll just create a relay to try and make it as, as tidy as possible but Hey, sometimes you just need to, sometimes you just need to give up. Um, <laughs> okay, then we create a panel. Connect it like that. Expand it, like so. 
and we get ourselves a table a table of this structure right the second table i do need to stream it so right click stream destination uh this is going to be called youtube 2 save right click stream contents now it's going to be saved great we have ourselves our two uh structures now it's time to work with this in unreal engine all right so in unreal engine um by the way available to patreon supporters blah 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 um in our testing area right here i have uh i need to create a way of how the csv tables will be read and that is called a structure so i'm going to right click um on anywhere on my blueprints in my blueprints folder and i'll need to create a new um like the, the, the structure for for the data table reading which is right here under blueprints structure i'll name it uh youtube uh interactive struct youtube interactive struct there we go I'll double click it. I'll make sure that this structure will wait for values that are, um, what's the correct word? It's gonna wait for values that are uh, defined in my uh, CSV files, right? Like so. Oh, and I forgot to uh, give a file type to YouTube to a csv file so here i'll fix it right click uh stream destination and here i'll just change this to csv like that hit save uh just in case restream the contents open this up now this works okay so we don't need this one there we go that works so before I can import these, I need a structure and that structure needs to know uh, what is it that it's waiting for. Index, X location, Y location, Z location, right? So let's do that. So by default, the index uh, is not necessary to add. Uh, so we can start with the location values or not values, but uh, names. X underscore loc, Y. So everything is just X, Y, Z underscore LOC or ROT. Okay. Here, I just write X underscore LOC. Like that. And I change this from Boolean into float. Because that's, float is basically a number of a comma. Right? From Boolean to float. And I need to add another variable. So I click on add. That's going to be Y location and so on right uh y loc z loc and same thing for rotation x rot wish there was a faster way to do this y rot and then we have z rot there we go all of this is set uh, once this is done, I can save this, close this, and never think about this ever again. Oh, this is my other uh, testing. That's the blueprint that we are actually creating. Or sorry, the struct that we're creating. So with this done, let's import our two Excel spreadsheets here. I'm just going to select both of them, drag them over, and here the data table options appears where it asks me to give it a the type, the data table type, where I'll find my YouTube interactive struct, like this. Hit apply. Uh, here I do this again, apply. And I have my two data tables. If I double click on them, open them up, I can see that everything is quite clean, quite nicely packed here. Okay. Now we need to create a blueprint that actually can read these uh, tables and create a structure from it and also we actually need the element right we kind of need the element so let us import or export our fbx file from 
uh, here. So this box, export. And I'm just gonna find my, oh my God, I have too much crap here. There we go. And F, it's gonna be FBX motion builder. There we go. And I'm just gonna name it element or uh, YouTube element. There we go, save. Okay, that's done. So we can also import our element here. Bam. You just drag and drop it in, literally. Bam. Uh, here is going to ask you for, uh, would you like to change the rotations, the locations and whatnot? I don't honestly remember. Um, I kind of need to check. So give me a second. I checked. No, you don't need to change anything here. I will build Nanite though, just to make it a little bit um, easier on the computer so that it is kind of um, remeshed uh, according to the pixel density of the screen. Okay, import all. Uh, it's gonna complain, that's fine, we don't care. Uh, we have our element and if I plop it in, you can see that it's a pretty big boy, but uh, this is a very small um, box or, or capsule of the Nakagin capsule tower, so it's fine. It's actually fine as, as an element. Then we do need an actor to create an actor which is going to populate this element according to the Excel spreadsheet, right? So I'm gonna right click, uh, I'm gonna create a blueprint class, I'm gonna call it an actor, uh, an actor type, and I'm going to give it a name of uh, YouTube um, Interactive Grasshopper, GH, Interactive Grasshopper, there we go. Double click to open it up, there we go, and basically it gives you the um, viewport, construction script, event graph. Viewport is where uh, you can check how the structure is going to look like before the game begins. Construction script is going to be used to construct the structure before the game begins. And event graph is what happens after the game has started. So in the viewport, or rather with viewport selected, I need to create a like a envelope or a box in which my mesh is going to live and from which it's going to be uh, populated and the fast way or uh, the fastest way of how you can populate a mesh is through using instance static mesh so add instanced static mesh like that i'll just call it element like that and here with this selected, with element selected, uh, for the static mesh, I will find my uh, YouTube element, the static mesh that I have here, just imported, right? That's it. Uh, I can also give it a material, so let's just give it some sort of a, a grid material for now, prototype grid, that's fine. Okay, compile. Then we go to construction script tab right here, and we will actually construct the shape, right? So if I go to the construction script tab here, it has, you know, the, the start trigger. And then what we need to do is we need to get data uh, table um, row names. So we need to get a row names of our data table. Right, and I will select what's the data table that we need to get. It's gonna be YouTube one for now. YouTube one, there we go. Or rather, let's do YouTube two because that's gonna be easier to see if we messed up or not. YouTube two, because it's a spiral. If it's not a spiral, once we press play, then you know, then we will know that we need to fix something. Uh, we have our row names here, so like indices, the R r location rotation right all, all of the names there so we will use for each loop i'm just dragging off from these triggers to and, and typing in the commands for each loop uh should it be with break no it shouldn't for each loop we go through this array of the names 
and as we're going through them we will uh, get data table um, row not names but now we are getting the row so we're separating out the row right we're reading the table line by line basically uh, then for data table we need the same one youtube 2 there we go and our array element comes into the row name right so it, it knows which row to read like that perfect okay with that done now our output row we can break it break it apart like that nope yep <laughs> sorry yes we break youtube interactive struct and we get the location and the rotation right like that that then when when it says that row is found it should add instance element instances or instance no it should add one instance per row so add instance of our element that's the name of our static uh, instance mesh like that it asks us for what's the transform so we need to make transform i believe make transform there we go connect that to the instance transform asks us for location rotation and scale uh, you can see that the location um like we have like three outputs here and we have only one input here so we need to make a vector make vector for the location and just connect x y z like that for rotation it's actually a different thing it's called make rotator i don't know make rotator connect there x y and z there we go the scale stays the same it's just one 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 right so we were gucci now with this compiled uh, make sure that you compile it and you check the viewport you zoom out yep that looks like a spiral great now let's go back to the construction script and change this to youtube one youtube one here like that compile save viewport also looks uh, does that look fine that might be inverted actually probably is fine uh, so both methods work either inverting the x and y axis for movement or inverting the x and y axis for rotation both methods seem to be working i would if if something's wrong i would first get rid of the movement and just focus on the rotation i think maybe but it seems hard to troubleshoot if things are working properly right anyway now with this done i can um actually drag this over here press play and you can see the you know our little structure here um it is using a simple body collision meaning that if if this was not a box then the co co colliding surface would be just like an envelope around the a more porous shape so just make sure to right click on your youtube element um, the box here and choose asset actions bulk edit via property matrix uh, you could just double click on it as well but i'm just used to it and you type in collision with double l collision complexity instead of project default use complex collision as simple file save all close there we go so collisions are fixed now under event graph under event begin play this is in our interactive grasp or in, in our hedgehog script under here i will say uh, let's enable the input right um so that we can press something and the this 
uh, blueprint will interact. So enable input and who is controlling the input? Well, that's gonna be get player controller like that. Easy peasy compile save. Okay, now we don't really care about actor begin overlap. We will care about the tick though. So we will we will use the tick. Okay, we press play, it starts ticking, and then we will if we press the mouse key, it should transform from one variation to the other, right? So let's create a gate gate not multi-gate just gate like that um enter the, the 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 gate will either let the tick through the trigger through or it will not and the gate is open when i press a mouse key let's see a left mouse button so let's try left mouse button mouse events left mouse button when it's pressed the gate is open when it's released the gate is closed like that should be good then uh, if we open the gate we need to uh, we need to get our element in here and we need to count how many do we have in the scene so it's like list length i think it's called get instance count like that get instance count okay and we need to loop through each of them for loop for loop starting from zero until we reach all of the instances like that okay so we've done that then we do need to okay this is gonna be a little bit tricky We do need to get data table row names. Sorry, give me a second. I, I need to think. Okay, what we're definitely going to be using is um, update instance transform of the all of the elements, right? We're updating their uh, location. So we press the button, it's transforming, so we're updating we will use the index is going to be the instance index so as we're looping through the elements it's going to checking which elements need to be trans transformed through the index that's easy that's e simple and we're the transformation happens by us interpolating between uh youtube one table the values on data table one to the values of data table two. Okay, okay, we're we're, we're getting there. So we're using uh, t interp interpolate two, interpolate two, t interp two. Uh, so that's transform interpolate two. T stands for transform. Our current transform is going to be us ch just checking. Uh, Oh, that's gonna be easy that's us just checking uh the element and just getting get current instance um uh, damn it uh get get instance transform there we go get instance transform like that uh taking the for loops index and choosing that as our instance index because again, we're going through every instance all at, you know, one at a time. Uh, and the current transform is whatever, you know, the currently elements are, you know, wherever they are. And then our target transform, that's the tricky bit. I really don't want to read the table anymore, but I guess, yeah, we, we, we kind of need to, right? So we will need to get table row names like that uh table is gonna be our youtube 2 the spiral table right youtube 2 
because those are going to be the new transforms and from it um, we will get table row get data table row again youtube 2 but this time we're not looping through it individually but rather we're using this index right here to loop through them so i'm gonna do get a copy get a copy of the names from the names and get this index like that and now I can actually, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. I can actually connect my loop body into get the table row name. So as it's looping, it's kind of going through the, this second data table row by row. It's checking the current elements, the current position of the elements, and it's updating or trying to interpolate to the, from the current element position to the new position of the elements uh, that are described here under uh, YouTube 2. So I'll need to break, break interactive struct like that. Let's make it a little bit more, a little bit more room here because the target needs a bit more room. Um, and we, again, we make transform like that. We make vector easy that's gonna be for the location and make rotator for the rotation the scale stays one uh, we're, we're fine with that x y z x y z okay we're good on this end and then the new transform is going to be our target to interpolate to so we're slowly moving into it uh the question is how slow um the delta time that's the counter that needs to be counting in real world time rather than a, along a tick so because tick is i think it's connected to the cpu clock it might i might be wrong about this but we do need a get world uh, delta seconds instead like that that connects here and interpolation speed so basically how many seconds to interpolate i'll say two two seconds to interpolate are we good with this i think we're good with this i think we can try okay compile save press play and i'm gonna press the mouse button right now Hmm. Well, that doesn't work. Okay. Let's see what am I doing wrong. YouTube 2. That's correct. That's fine. Mm. The enable input also seems fine. What about here? Yeah, that, that goes into the gate. Left mouse button is indeed pressed. Hmm. Curious. So if when I press the left mouse button, it doesn't actually. Um. Oh, I'm stupid. Uh, get player controller. That is not a target. The target is the actor, like this blueprint that on which we're working. Get player controller is the player controller. I'm sorry. Compile, save, play still doesn't work that's not good for some reason it doesn't register when i when it's pressed it only registers when it's released what okay uh let's try any other keyboard key um why it's gonna be why because i that's the question why key that's the question that i want to ask uh not any key why 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 oh my god should have chosen <laughs> simpler key okay pressed to open released to close compile save play why hmm i believe I need to 
pause the video and analyze this. One second. Found it. I found the culprit. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm getting tired. I'll need to make a pause here. But uh, the culprit was, and actually we don't need it to be why, the culprit was me not connecting the row found here with the update instance transform. So this update never got triggered. It only received all of the data, necessary data, but it never got the trigger that it needed. So get data table row needs to connect to update instance transform clearly. So row found connects to here, gets triggered, press play, press Y, still doesn't work. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm gonna scream. Uh, let's see if it needs to be world space, mark render, yeah, yeah, it needs to be mark render state dirty. If true, the change should be visible immediately. Yes. We tick mark this, compile, press play, Y, voila. Whew. Okay, that, that got me scared for there for a second. So now let's fix the Y with um, left mouse button. Uh, if it's pressed, it's open. If it's closed, it's, uh, if it's released, it's closed. There we go. And now I will need to map to my right mouse button a reverse of this. Uh, how do you do that, you might ask? Well, you select everything except the tick. Don't select the tick, but you select everything else. Copy, paste, Control C, Control V, drag it below, right here. And you can even like take this, press C to comment and say uh, one, two, two like that and that one is going to be two to one right so cop comment two to one like that so we're flip-flopping left mouse button no 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 uh, we will be using right mouse button like so when it's pressed we open when released we close the problem is that we can't have another tick and we can't really do it this way that's a little i mean you can't have two triggers from the same node so we need to do a sequence that's very easy you just do a sequence uh, you just write sequence there we go first this happens and then if this doesn't go anywhere then this happens so from then one we connect that to the enter as easy as that so this is how you can have multiple uh triggers triggered from the tick then here we change this to youtube one youtube one data tables uh, nothing else really needs to be changed hit compile save go back in here press play thumb right click left click right click Easy, easy peasy. Uh, let me start running here and just see. Yeah. I can quite easily run up the stairs here. That works. My frame rate is still at 200, which is nice. And yeah, we have a hedgehog. And unfortunately, I can't fit under it. I want to fit under it. So let me show you how easy it is to change things now. Um, first thing is, let me just open up. As I'm going to be blabbing, I'll open up my old um, Rhino file. Um, so first thing is the dome needs to be higher, right? So I'm just going to show my curves here. F10, the curves uh, to maybe I want it to be a little bit more uh, bulgy and maybe one side of the dome should be a little bit higher than the other two like that and perhaps it kind of goes, goes like so, something like that and I'll just lift it up by two meters just up just so that it's like that and perhaps a little bit <clears throat> shorter. Um, you might think, okay, so what, what do you need to do to update? 
Well, actually, you just go back into your uh, file here, into your geometry, uh, Unreal file. You choose YouTube one because that's the data table that's responsible for this hedgehog. Right click, re-import. Oh yeah, and you kind of need to compile this. And now, now it's done, right? So you re-import and you recompile the uh, construction script. And now we have a different type of a hedgehog that can still uh, transform quite nicely. Let me make this bigger so that you can see better. It's nice, isn't it? Like that. Our staircase or a hedgehog. The smearing effect that you see here, the smearing effect uh, can be... Uh, removed by changing the anti-aliasing settings under project settings here. Uh, if I anti-aliasing, uh, temporal super resolution creates smearing of these kind of moved objects. Uh, so you would need to use multi-sample for instance. Um, and now if I press play here, you can see that now it doesn't have any smearing. But it's also the anti-aliasing is not as nice anymore, right? So I actually prefer the temporal super resolution versus the regular anti-aliasing because even though we have smearing, the edges are nice. They're photo photorealistic. They look pretty. They look nice. All right. So that's uh, that's that in terms of the updating the geometries right all you, that's all you need to do uh, in terms of changing the element that's also super easy so i'm just going to uh, do a little bit of a naughty thing because i don't want to model uh, copy paste <laughs> that's my shape don't worry about it if you want to learn how to make these shapes uh, consider checking out my sub D um, tutorials, like modeling tutorials. I might do more of them, but there's plenty on this channel. Just type in sub D, get the and uh, you'll you'll find plenty. But basically, with this form, I just export it. I click on my YouTube element here to overwrite it. Yes, replace. Yes, yes, yes. Go back into Unreal, right click, reimport. That's it. <laughs> now we have this form. How quick was that? Pretty damn quick, wasn't it? I'm, 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 I'm happy. I'm happy. So happy, in fact, that I accidentally moved the ground. Shouldn't do that. But yeah. Now we can uh, please run. There we go. Now we can close the door. Open the door. And wow, a structure. Oh my God, it transforms. And then you run up the stairs and you see the wild, wild world that I've built. Those of you who want to see the uh, nature part of this video, you know, that, that the trees and whatnot that I showed at the start of the video, um, I will be doing a separate, a separate um, not a tutorial, but like a live stream slash workflow video where, where I'll be creating a full on architectural proposal uh, or renders for architectural proposal. Uh, and that's going to happen in my second channel uh, at Gedan. That's it's going to be at the end of this this video, which is, by the way, now that the end of this video is now. Patreons get all files. Please support the channel by subscribing, by pushing the bell, uh, notifications, and so on, right? And leaving a nice comment. That's always appreciated. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye.